Hey everyone, it's Dan. Welcome back. If you've painted with me before, thank you for joining me again. And if you've not, I wanted to put a little disclaimer at the beginning here, just uh, explaining my painting style, which I've mentioned in prior videos is pretty unusual. It evolved out of dipping models. Uh, but what we do is we go through and block out uh, kind of brighter colors like you would with a dip, uh, do a dry brush highlight of white and bright silver on the metal bits, and then do a very heavy wash either with Army Painter Quick Shade or with, uh, in my case, Agrax Earthshade. And so I've been wondering for a while what to call this, both for, I guess, branding reasons, but predominantly because I needed to refer to it as something other than just the weird painting style that I use. Uh, and Ernesto Rodriguez, in one of my videos in the comments, had suggested calling it Razzle Dazzle, uh, which I love uh, because it's ridiculous, like Slap Chop and some other uh, miniature painting techniques. And I think it accurately describes what we're doing here, which, uh, if you're not familiar, is um, I'm a big fan of show tunes. It is from the musical Chicago, and it's a song all about uh, kind of tricking people with smoke and mirrors, which is kind of what we're doing here with this painting technique. We're doing something that's really, it's a core, very simple and easy to do, and I think has results that punch a little bit above their weight class. So uh, that's what I'll be calling it from now on. Uh, so thank you, Ernesto Rodriguez, for suggesting that. And let's move on to painting up some of these Rus and early armored Saxon models from Victrix that I've kind of kitbashed together into what I'm calling Yams Vikings. And what I did at the beginning there is laid out all the paints. If you wanted to paint along here or at least wondering what's coming up, those are the paints that I'll be using over the course of this video. So what we're going to do, I mentioned at the beginning and have shown in prior videos, we're going to block out uh, colors. And you want to choose generally brighter colors than you might use with traditional layer highlighting because, as I said, we're going to do a heavy wash at the end that's going to darken a lot of these areas down. Uh, these models, again, are from Victrix, and I think they're lovely. Uh, they really did kit bash very well, and I deliberately chose bits that are really covered in metal chain mail. So that's what we're starting with. That's what I would recommend you do with whatever miniatures you're using is start with whatever color you're going to need the most of because you can be pretty messy with it uh, apply a lot of it and that's what i did there so i went with the dark plate mail metal silver color from army painter and then with that down i'm now actually moving on to the gold accent bits and i'm choosing things like sword hilts and there's some visor details that i'm picking out in gold so i'm going through with retributor retributor armor from citadel and picking those out and the reason i'm doing this now instead of a little bit down the road is because I'm going to do a, a dry brush of bright silver because I do a dry brush of white over the non-metallic areas, very light dry brush, and we want to do silver for the metal areas. Uh, so what you'll find, this is something that I also did in my Hannibal's Veterans painting video, is that if you do that with the metal bits now, it's, uh, it's a lot cleaner this way, that you can get your metal highlights in without worrying about getting a bright metallic color on say red or something like that so we can be pretty messy at this stage because there's no other color on the model except for these metallics so we're using shining silver from army painter in this case and doing just a pretty heavy dry brush of that over all of the metal areas including the gold that we had just picked out but there's lots of chain mail on these models and lots of raised kind of ridges on the helmets and stuff like that so hitting pretty much the entirety of the model including of course the weapons and then we're switching to Zandri dust. So we're done with all of our, our metallics right now. But we're switching to Zandri dust. I think this is a great color for backs of shields, for spear shafts, uh, weapons like axes and stuff like that. I think it's just a good neutral, like something between a yellow and a tan color. And has a nice result, especially once we give it a heavy wash. And I went with a comparatively limited palette here. I know it probably doesn't seem limited to some, but... Uh, that's one of the advantages of this painting technique is that you can really use a lot of different colors and really not add a lot of time because there's no regular highlights to apply here. So what I'm doing here, I picked out six. It actually ended up being seven colors because I added in Incubi Darkness is the one I didn't show there. But added in yeah six or seven colors that I'm going to mix up between these models. And so mathematically, just assuming a tunic and a pant color for each of these guys... Uh, what that would mean across 10 models is that I would need 20 different articles of clothing to be painted. So with six or seven colors, that's going to be three or four, yeah, I guess three uh, applications across these this unit of 10 models. 
Uh, so what I end up doing is I'll, I'll paint like a pant on one, I'll paint a tunic on the other, and a pant on the next one in one color, and I'll switch to the next color and kind of move down the assembly line that way. And you can see here I'm switching to a tunic for this color that I'm working on, and then I'll switch to a pant. And then what I do is I jumble all the models up, and then I'll switch colors. So I'll go uh, <clears throat> like to a purple color or whatever, you know, plum color that I picked out here and kind of alternate down the line until everything is picked out at that point. Uh, so there's there's not a whole lot of um, logic to it beyond that, that you just kind of want to do your best to alternate here. But in theory, again, there's it takes so little time to do this. You really could have 20 different colors and have every single article of clothing be a different color on these models. And I would argue it doesn't take really any longer than if you were going to paint them all the same color other than just the act of opening up a paint pot. But especially with these Dark Age models, Ancients models, I think it leads to a very cool effect when you've got some different colors within the unit. I generally stayed toward neutral colors with these guys uh, for reasons that I'll get to, especially at the shield step. But uh, in general, I, I do that with my Dark Age figures. There's not a whole lot of color, uh, and if there is, it's limited. So three of the models actually had cloaks here. So I went with two ver versions of red from Citadel. I went with, with corn red and with Mephiston Red. Mephiston Red has, is probably my favorite color uh, produced by any manufacturer. It just has such wonderful coverage, and I think that it, it is a, just a very beautiful color. So I ended up doing Mephiston Red for one, I did Corn Red for the other, and then I did sort of a blend of the two. I wet blended the two colors together onto the third cape. And then I used that Ushapti Bone color that you see sitting off on the left there to paint the furs. This technique that we're doing is especially effective on fur cloaks like this. The, the fur, you'll see at the end, I think it ends up looking really good once you give it a nice heavy wash. And then for skin colors, I've been quite fond of this color from uh, Reaper Paints, of all things. It's their golden skin color, uh, number 09092, for those who care. And yeah, I think it's excellent straight out of the pot. It uh, is the nice blend between a you know shade and a highlight color for a skin tone. So I'm applying that onto mostly just the hands. There's very little skin on these models. Again, they're quite armored. And then we're going to switch to Rhinox Hide. I normally, for leathers, like to even mix these up, again, because there's really not that much added time to doing it. And I think that the end result looks cool when you've got a variety of colors for even things like belts and shoes, scabbards, things of that nature. But on these guys, I wanted not necessarily a slightly more uniform look, but... Again, a more limited palette. So I ended up going with this Rhinox Hide color from Citadel, kind of like their old scorched brown. And you can really use any dark brown color that you like. I almost used Doom Bowl Brown, which is more of a reddish brown, but decided on this darker color instead. And then I'm just picking out all the belts, the scabbards, the shoes. As I mentioned, there's some pouches on some of them, the sax knife scabbard on the front of some of the models as well. So being sure at this stage is to be a little bit more careful not to smudge anywhere, especially on the metal bits. But if you do, it's not a huge deal. You can go back in and tidy that up before we move on to the dry brush and then the wash stages of these models. And then from here, what we're going to be moving into is some liner work. Uh, what we're doing is, I really like the almost like pirate pant aesthetic on some Viking models, but these Yams Vikings in particular being, in my mind, especially piratical, if that's a word. Uh, I like this kind of pantaloon look on them. So what, all I'm doing, I also think that this ends up looking pretty effective with this particular painting style that we're using. Uh, what I do is I just take a bright white color or really any two contrasting colors. That's the only thing that's important here. So I have like a dark brown color on this pant. So I'm going with Corex white as a bright accent color to just drop in some lines. So again, I'm using a detail brush for this, but it, it, you don't have to be that neat about it because you're going to do a heavy wash in the end that sort of blends it all together and will naturally create some shadows and leave some of the brighter areas behind as highlights. But you can do the opposite here too. So I have a bright pant color, kind of it's a Cree khaki is the base. So I'm taking that Incubi Darkness, dark blue, kind of bluish green sea foam color, and then lining that in instead. So you can play around with it. It's very simple to do. As you saw, it's just dropping in some lines. And then here with the shields, the uh, the motif that I'm going for here actually isn't anything historical as far as I'm aware of, but I saw uh, somewhere in Scandinavia there is a modern-day 
Yom's Viking reenactment group that use this black backed shield with a red cross on it that I just thought looked super badass. And so I have 25 of these models already painted up and I wanted to add some of these wrist figures in. I thought it would be appropriate, boost the unit to 35 and use some of the actual wrist models in there. Uh, but yeah, for those, I, I use just a black background and then I line blood red. And again, if you've not seen any of my prior videos, uh, freehand work, I find it's not, I don't want to say it's easy, it just takes practice. But the mentality you should have, and I'll repeat over and over again uh, until I'm dead, is that you need to go into it knowing that you're going to not get it right the first time. So we're going to line out this red cross here. And then what we're going to plan to do is come back. Once we do, I'm going to do two coats of the red. Uh, but we're going to come back in with that Abaddon black base color to neaten up the lines. And in theory, you could go back and forth multiple times. I certainly did that on the Checkered Shields video that I put out where in order to do something like a grid, you would have to go back and forth probably two times, three times. Uh, and in this case, don't, <laughs> don't hesitate to come back in with the red again if you go too far with the black, uh, you know, cutting in. And that's what we're doing here. I took that bad in black, and you can see I'm tightening up some of the lines, especially on the outside edges of the cross to make them look less rounded. Uh, but you can also, you know, if you made the red line too thick, you can make it more thin. And then vice versa, you can come back in with the red if you then go too far and make it too thin, etc. So play around with it. Again, don't be afraid to seesaw back and forth. I think that's a big, important part of any kind of freehand work. And then uh, the dry brush step here is kind of the magic that uh, causes the razzle-dazzle, if you will, which is we're going to come in with a very, very light dusting of pure white out of the pot, and we're going to hit everything that's not metallic. That's why we did the silver step at the beginning so that we can then come in and just target the areas that aren't metallic with white. Don't worry too much if you do end up hitting some of the metal areas. It, it comes out in the wash. It's not a big deal. Uh, but you, you don't want to be deliberately dry brushing those areas because it makes it look more matte. Uh, however, again, if you nick it, that's not a problem at all. Uh, but you can see, yeah, I'm just going over the entirety of the model. It's very, very light dusting, like the lightest dry brush that you've ever done. And what you'll see happening, you can kind of let it build up. Um, you can see here, like I'm going over that cloak and you can barely see anything happening except that some of the raised areas are becoming slightly brighter. And that would probably be sufficient. You can then wash or dip it from there. And I think it would in and of itself look better than just a regular dip into Army Painter Quick Shade because you've brightened up some of these raised areas. However, I like to take it one step further and come in with that same pure white color and do some what I call dot highlights. Uh, you want to use the prior highlight step as a guide and you want to essentially highlight those areas that were picked up at the dry brush step, really focusing on raised areas like knuckles as you see me painting here tops of shoes or a tunics like the top of a fold something like that so you really want to focus on areas where you feel that the sun would be catching and again i can't stress enough to use the dry brush step as a guide for kind of where to place these highlights it takes practice just to have an eye for where to put these in that makes sense uh, but the general rule of thumb as i said is you want to stick to upper areas and again, as I also mentioned, I think that on fur cloaks, this effect, once you wash it, looks really, really cool. And this is an important piece of that, which is to really bring up the contrast, the, the upper highlights of these fur cloaks, so that once you wash them, there's a, a very nice contrast between the dark areas and the raised highlighted areas. Flat surfaces, too, are no different and a little bit more tricky to highlight. Uh, but as I said, you want to stick to the raised areas, so you'll see me kind of placing highlights toward the top part of the cloak and sticking to very, very small dots. If I didn't mention that, you want to keep them as really as small as you can. And uh, don't be afraid to place like multiple like you see me doing here on the cloak. It kind of implies small folds or irregularities in the fabric. And uh, even down toward the bottom where like the cloak kicks back out. So again, play around with it. You'll, you'll really we'll get a feel for it over time of where highlights make sense if you're trying to do something like this for yourself. But I would recommend sticking to models that have lots of folds on them, lots of fabric as you're starting out. And then I come back with the silver color, the shining silver in this case, to do essentially the same thing on the metal areas. Again, we dry brushed it and that was probably sufficient, but I like to come back in with a nice bright silver color to do some dots. And as I said, bring that contrast level way, way up. And so this is a pre-weathering step on the shield, which is I take that back of the shield wood grain color and take a, a fine detail like liner brush, 
thin it down a little bit too, and you're just going to put in what are supposed to represent sword strokes, like the shield was kind of banged up, and we're going to do a, a weathering step once we do the basing work as well, but that's a, a nice little what I call pre-weathering step there. And then this is it. This is the most important piece, which is, again, what, whatever you're using. I use, uh, it said sir from Sepia, but it's a mix of a bunch of different washes. Uh, but I would recommend Agrax Earthshade if you're just going to be using a uh, Citadel wash. But you could use Army Painter Quick Shade. That's certainly how I started doing this. And it's sort of just evolved into this quick hand version of it, which is you're going to take a very heavy wash. Uh, you're going to bathe the entire model, even though you saw the black part of the shield is going to get it because it does have a subtle effect on even black areas. And then what you'll do is you'll wick away anything that you see pooling. So you want to very quickly dab the brush on some, like a paper towel, and then pull away anything you don't need. And then you're going to let it dry overnight. You do need a good matte varnish if you're going to do this, because it, it does leave a sheen behind. Certainly, if you're using Army Paint or Quick Shade, you definitely need some kind of matte varnish, because it's glossy when you use that stuff. But even with the shade that I'm using, it has a kind of satin finish to it. So I recommend a matte varnish of some kind. I've used testers before, it's very good. Uh, I use this Army Painter matte as probably my favorite stuff that I've used. But you just wanna go over, I usually do two thin coats of this stuff over all, again, the non-metallic areas on the model. We'll get this. And then here are the 10 finished models that we worked on together here. And you can see I've gone with my standard basing and I did some subtle blood effects too, just cause I thought these were crazed Vikings, so it would be appropriate here. I actually have videos on both of those topics. I'll put links in the description if you're curious on how I did that. And, and then what I've done is I've then blended them into the larger unit that I had already had done, the 25 that were already finished. You'd be familiar with these if you saw my rebasing video that I released a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I hope you'll agree. I think they look pretty cool and that they blended together pretty nicely. This is a, now a mix of uh, Victrix Fireforge and some other stuff as well. So anyway, got some more painting content for you. I've got a couple of reviews to get up and I've mentioned before I have a tournament that I'm gonna be going to this weekend for the ninth age. So I'll have a brief battle report series on that that I'll try to gear toward uh, pretty much anybody that's played Warhammer just so you can all follow along if you're interested. So as ever, appreciate you guys dropping by and until next time, happy gaming.